Welcome to my 219th video on my work with OO Gauge. This part will chronicle my efforts over the past week or two to fix problems with my Hornby 003 rail tabletop railway. The main focus will be on 003 rail isolating points. These are a great item when they work properly. When Double O was first introduced, only non-isolating points were made, which meant that if you wanted to isolate a section of your track, a siding or a branch line, for example, you had to put a special isolating rail at the start of the section and then wire up a switch to that isolating rail. Then you would flip that switch to turn power to the section on or off. In fact, I had to basically do something like that with my Bachman Easy Track OO gauge layout, as Easy Track points are not isolating. If you're running standard analog DC, DCC is another matter, of course, it's way simpler to use isolating points. Then, when the point is set to direct trains to the branch, the branch is powered, and when the point is set not to direct trains to the branch, the branch is not powered. All you have to do is set the point, with no need for special wiring and no extra switches to flip. So, isolating points are a great idea for DC operations. But the double isolating points tend to be a wee bit of a nightmare, especially when you're getting them as old, used items after they've been through who knows what. Double isolating points do not stand up well to misuse. There are so many ways they can go wrong. Chiefly, shades of the Spanish Inquisition here, they go wrong in three ways. No, four ways. No, five ways. One, the switching contacts don't work properly, so power is either passed to a branch when it should be isolated, or power isn't passed to the branch when it should be. Two, the switch works, but the power doesn't get passed down the line because of bad wiring or faulty connecting tabs. Three, power seems to be passed and isolated OK, but locos stall when trying to go over the point because they aren't able to pick up properly whilst on the point. Four, rolling stock, locos, coaches or wagons derails when trying to go over the point. And five, locos don't follow the setting of the points. They go straight when the point is set to turn. Believe me, I've encountered all of these issues repeatedly with my double O points. Some of these issues apply even to non-isolating points, but most of mine are isolating because I want that control over the power. In particular, the point at the left end of my double O layout was causing problems, mainly cases 3 and 5, loco stalling or failing to turn. I already replaced this point once, but I'd basically come to the conclusion that I needed to replace the replacement. Apart from points that I had previously removed since they were causing problems, I had four more right-hand isolating points on hand, which I bought used on eBay. I decided, rather than just picking the one that superficially looked best, I would try to be scientific and test them all. Spoiler alert, this wasn't a terribly successful exercise. I spent days mucking around testing my available points, and when I came to actually replace the point on the layout, things didn't really go as the testing would have suggested. All in all, the process was largely torture, hence the title of this video. As a co-subject to this whole period of trial and testing, I did also work more on the 003 Rail Silver King chassis that I had, in hopes that I might be able to fit it with a body and make an LMS loco of it. I did more servicing on that chassis and included it in the point trials. This also turned out to be basically pointless torture that went nowhere useful. So you're warned, this is not exactly a happy tale. Nevertheless, perhaps something useful can be gleaned from my efforts, and I did eventually manage to replace the point on the layout with something that, for the time being at least, seems more functional. And I'll finish with some running video after that replacement, with my two latest two-rail to three-rail conversion locos pulling little trains. I'll start with the Silver King chassis. A viewer commented on my previous video that I'd put the parts in the wrong order when reattaching the center rail pickup to the chassis. The plate with the sticking up contact for the suppression capacitor should have been fitted underneath the brown isolating plate rather than on top of it. 
as I had it as seen here. This comment was, of course, correct. In fact, I'm rather surprised that the chassis ran at all as I had it assembled, as I would have rather thought that this would have caused the centre rail pickup to just short to the chassis. But it can't have done so, as the chassis did run. Nevertheless, I wanted to fix this issue, so I removed the retaining nut and unplugged the brush connector. Then I put the plates back on in the right order, with the brown insulating plate on top of the plate with the capacitor contact. And I redid the retaining nut back up. The same commenter also suggested that perhaps the centre rail pickups were not both picking up well, and this was why the uh, chassis was stopping on points. So I tested both of the spoons on the centre rail pickup. Both of them seemed to be passing power absolutely fine. I was a bit concerned that it seemed that the bogey wheels could short circuit to the front pickup spoon. This was definitely an issue on the bench, but probably it wouldn't happen on the track. I tested the chassis on the track again. It didn't seem to work any better for this work. I decided that I'd replace the ball bearings in the motor. The armature actually seemed to be pivoting absolutely fine, but this was one thing that I hadn't done, so I thought I might as well try it. I took out the brushes and springs. And then I undid the nut and removed the magnet and the pole pieces. I unscrewed the top bearing with a small screwdriver. And I removed the armature. Here are the armature and the top bearing out of the chassis. The nut is supposed to be screwed on the bearing up against the top of the chassis, locking the bearing in position. Both bearings appeared to have perfectly good balls in them. I used strong magnets to get the ball out of the bottom bearing. I don't know how else you'd ever get it out. So now I had removed the balls from both bearings. You can see the balls here, at a little above the centre of this image. They didn't really seem to be anything wrong with the balls that were there, but I figured that I might as well replace them with new ones. I had plenty on hand as I bought a bag of a hundred on Amazon for this purpose. I cleaned out the old lube from the bottom bearing and put in a new ball and then applied new grease. I fitted the armature back into position. I did the same for the top bearing, cleaned it out, fitted a new ball and re-lubricated. I screwed the top bearing into place. I tightened it down until it bore on the armature shaft and then backed it off half a turn. Then I tightened the nut up against the top of the chassis to hold the position of the bearing. I put the magnet and the pole pieces back on and then remagnetized again. So now the chassis was reassembled with new balls in the bearings and a newly charged magnet. I did also clean the commutator whilst I had the armature out. I tried the motor with power to the brushes. It seemed to work fine and nice and quietly, but when I tried it on the tracks it didn't really run any better than before. I put the chassis onto my rolling road with the idea of trying to run it in some. Because this is a three-rail chassis, I couldn't actually power it through the rails of the rolling road, so I applied power directly to the brushes. I ran the chassis for a while forwards and then for a while backwards like this. This did bed the brushes back in so that the chassis ran a bit better, but it still wasn't very good. Next, I turned my attention to the project to replace the point at the left-hand end of the layout. I had four right-hand isolating points on hand that I hadn't previously used, and I determined to test these four to try to select one that would work well to install on the layout. To make a little testing setup, I also got out three standard curve sections. I started by polishing the rails of all of these track sections with fine emery paper on a wood block. Then I wiped down all of the rails and contacts with electrical contact cleaner on a cloth. I used a multimeter to test the switching continuity of all of the points and adjusted the contacts as necessary. I straightened and tightened up all of the fish plates using needle-nose pliers. 
I numbered the points from one to four in pencil so that I could identify them properly during testing. I put a two foot by two foot foam tile on top of my test tracks and set up my three rail point testing arrangement on that, one curve coming into the point and curves going out on each of the branches, as would be the case for the position on the layout. I connected power from my testing controller using crocodile clips. I tested with a Hornby Jinty that I converted from two rail by fitting a Marklin skate centre pickup and with the Silver King chassis, as these were items that persistently had problems on the existing point on the layout. I tested each point with each model through each setting in each direction and made notes of the results. The Silver King chassis derailed when the point was set to turn in every case. It also had trouble maintaining power over number three when going straight. The Jinty was okay always on number one and number four, but failed to make the turn on number three, which is also what happened with the point on the layout. Number two I couldn't test at all initially, as though its continuity had tested out fine with the multimeter on the bench when I connected it up for testing with the tracks. It wouldn't pass across any power at all, so the models just stopped dead when they tried to go across the point. I was really mystified as to why point number two wasn't passing any power across since it had seemed to have perfectly okay continuity on the bench, but models just stopped dead as they tried to go across it as here with the Jinty. I brought the multimeter up to the testing area. It did indeed seem that there was little or no voltage beyond the point branch. When there was a good voltage going into the point, you can see here there's just over 11 volts going into the point. I disconnected and reconnected number two, and I did get power to pass for the turn, but still not straight. I brought up a regular Dublo model, the N2, to add to the testing mix, just to verify with a standard loco rather than one of my conversions. The N2 didn't really show any problems going over any of the points, except for the power transmission problem with number two. I kept mucking around with number two. This whole process was spread over several days. I eventually concluded that the power problems with number two stemmed from the fact that the insulators between the center rail connecting tabs and the tin plate base didn't quite go to the end of the base. They just weren't quite long enough, the insulators. And there wasn't much clearance between the tabs and the base. So there was sort of scope for complete or partial short circuiting there. I managed to get around the problems by bending the connecting tabs down a bit, straightening the ends of the base, and taking great care when connecting this point to other track sections. With the power problems fix, number two mostly worked okay, though with a bit of hesitation. The Silver King chassis derailed on the turn, but it did that on all of the points. I wondered if the wheels on the Silver King chassis might be badly gauged. That could cause derailment on points. One pair of the driving wheels was very poorly gauged, too wide at over 15 millimeters. Looking at the wheel on one side, it seemed to be partially coming off the axle. I seated that wheel back down on the axle with a punch. The large pliers are just supporting the back of the chassis whilst I hit the center of the wheel with the punch. That returned the wheels on that axle to a reasonable gauge, just over 14.1 millimetres. Unfortunately, the darn thing still derailed every time I tried to turn it over a point. I thought that possibly the bogey might be causing the derailment, so I removed the bogey. As here, the chassis is running here without the bogey, and I tried the chassis over the points without the bogey. The chassis still derailed all the time when turning over any point. At this juncture, I was out of ideas and I gave up. I guess I won't bother to try running this chassis anymore. I'll just strip it down for parts. I was now as ready as I would ever be to replace the point on the layout. I removed the screws from the existing point and the connecting track sections. I removed the existing point, which was quite tricky to do as the connecting sections were still joined to sections that were screwed down. This whole exercise proved pretty much a disaster. I first installed point number four, as that seemed to perform best in the testing. But it didn't work at all well when connected on the layout. Models hesitated badly on it, and the Jinty derailed when it was set to turn. 
So I tried number one, the next best in testing, and that didn't work well on the layout either. Finally, I ended up installing number two on the layout, the one that had all of the power problems. And indeed, when I first installed it on the layout, the controller short-circuited whenever this point was set to turn because of the problem with the connecting tabs. But now I sort of knew what was causing that, and I was able to fix this by disconnecting the turning end and reconnecting it with the previously top tab on the bottom. After that, number two seemed to work quite well on the layout. The Jinty could get over it in any direction without derailing, and it didn't seem to have much tendency to cause hesitation. I wouldn't go so far as to say it had no tendency to cause hesitation, but some hesitation on points with some models seems to be just a fact of life. I screwed the track sections back down and replaced the tunnel and the signals, etc. So now I'm hoping that performance at that end of the table will be better after all this effort. I connected some coaches up to my latest conversions for a bit of running. At the back is the converted Hornby streamlined coronation with a couple of mainline coaches, and at the front the Jinty with three four-wheeled coaches. So now I'll finish with a bit of running. Oh, hey, let me see if I can do a bit of running after all this mucking around. I'm not going to run this confounded Silver King chassis because I, I've given up on it. I can't, I can't get the blooming thing to work. It just keeps, uh, it just keeps... Uh, derailing on any point. I mean, I've given up on it. I'm just going to use, take it apart and use it for spares, I think. What I am going to run is, uh, I'll try to anyway, is the last two locos that I converted for three rail. The, the Jinty there. We'll see. And the Streamlined Coronation. The Jinty's a bit on the iffy side. It uh, it doesn't run that well on three rail. It's got a I put a Marklin skate pickup on it. Um, where are we? Oh, and of course I uh, I replaced that point. <laughs> In fact, I replaced it several times because uh, even after testing the points, the way they performed there didn't seem to correspond to how they performed when I tested them. So it ended up getting replaced with number two, which was the one that I had trouble connecting. Okay. Let's, I've, I've hooked up some coaches to these. They both have uh, tension lock couplings because they were originally later two rail Hornby Locos. Uh, so I've used coaches with tension lock couplings. I've got a couple of uh, mainline, well mainline in both senses of the word. They made, they made them LMS mainline coaches, but they're also LMS mainline brand coaches made by mainline. Hooked up behind the uh, streamline, the, you know, corridor. Uh, coaches and I've got three little uh, four-wheel coaches hooked up behind the um, Jinty. Okay, let's see. I think we need a, quite a lot of power for the um, hesitating a little going over the point there. <laughs> Ooh, and stopped going over that point. Oh, good lord. Well, I'm not even sure that was so much over the point. It was almost after it had passed the point, wasn't it? Maybe I just need to clean the track again. I clean my track all the time. It's not like I don't clean my track. And I got over it that time. No, this is not using the tender for pickup at all. It's, oh, we've lost one of our coaches. Um, you know what? I'm just going to famous last words, try and back him up, I think. He's lost a the coach there, you see. Ooh. Sorry. <laughs> it's hard to concentrate on what I'm on running the train and on... But no, I can't get that back coach to hook up. Okay, I'm going to give up on that train for a moment then and see if I can change the points over and run the Jinty, which is on the inner segment. Oh dear. Power forwards. Now the Jinty in general is not as good a runner as the, um, 
as the streamlined Coronation because his wheels are just not so well adapted to running on double O track, I think, basically. And, and it's the Marklin Skate pickup, which is not probably not as good. Oh, for goodness sake, everybody keeps stopping on the points. Oh, barely had to touch that to get it going, but they did have to touch it. That was one of the problems that I had. The duty just wouldn't turn on a lot of the points. He would, if you set the point to derail, he'd just sort of fall off. But he can, same as I was, but he can seem to turn on that one. That's one of the reasons I use that point. Okay, well, I'm not going to push it unduly. That's about all I'm going to do for now. So, what can I tell you? Um, neither of these, of course, is a real double-o loco. Generally speaking, real double-o locos will run a bit better on the double-o track, but even real double-o locos have trouble on the points quite often. So I'm, uh, you know, I don't know. I'm just hoping that that point replacement will serve well in the longer term. Well, those mainline coaches, uh, the mainline ones made by mainline, had some problems with the couplings. Well, for one thing, the coupling on the front was actually a tension. It was actually a simplex coupling, which didn't match with the coupling on the tender of the loco. So I've changed them out now for a couple of Hornby mainline coaches. These are actually the ones that have the battery-operated lights inside them, but I don't have the lights turned on at the moment. So, since these have proper Hornby tension lock couplings, Hopefully they'll stay coupled better, we'll see. I'm trying to set the power for the loco without looking at the controller because I'm working the camera. But... So it's not perfect, but... Uh... Honestly, this is the same as much worse, but this streamlined coronation works better than I expected it to, given that I uh, used a very poogy technique to fit a full centre rail pickup to it. It's basically just glued on. It's a proper horn with a centre rail pickup, but it's, <laughs> it's not attached to the loco very well. Any so there you go, I think they're actually staying coupled now. There we are, we'll try and not stop him on the points. So we fixed the coupling problem with that train.